Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. The time has finally come. New camera, no moon, CCD filter and an excitement. Over 9000. This is the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. The C in the MC is for color, the Pro for included tech cooling. I can cool this one-shot color camera down to minus 35 degrees below ambient temperature. It came with a lot of accessories and because of that very easy to adapt to my scope. If you never heard the term CMOS, a CMOS sensor, also called a active pixel sensor, is one of the two types of sensors used in cameras. The other type, a CCD chip, would be the more appropriate choice for astrophotography, but they are more expensive and way harder to handle. That's why most astrophotography cameras, let's say for intermediate photographers, have this kind of sensor. In warm nights, the sensor outside will be at a nice and cool 0 degrees Celsius, and in cold ones, at minus 20. Right now I'm taking the exposures at minus 15 degrees Celsius, because I am lazy. But why does a camera need to be cooled? Thanks for asking. A thing you don't want in your images is noise. A long exposure contains a lot of noise due to high ISO, read current and sensor temperature. If you compare two stretch darks of a DSLR, you will see the difference. And by the way, it's not called ISO anymore. The corresponding value for a dedicated astronomy camera is called gain. I already constructed a bias and dark library at minus 15 degrees Celsius at unity gain. And the unity gain setting is about 120, I believe. One of the best reasons for a cooled astronomy camera. I can prepare the dark and bias frames before the imaging session. In the times of DSLR, unimaginable. Apart from the camera, there's another new piece of equipment. Since I am not able to use my old Canon clip filters anymore, I had to stock up. This is a CLS filter, a city light pollution filter, but with a CCD attached to it. Unlike most astronomic CLS filters, this one cuts the infrared. And because of that, it acts like a luminance filter. If you shoot galaxies, the luminance filter is probably the most important one. It adds the needed detail and gets rid of the light pollution. Pretty nice, I must say. The Pinwheel Galaxy. If you ask me, one of the most beautiful galaxies in our entire night sky. It is a Hubble Type SB galaxy with a beautiful pink magenta glow and lots of star forming regions. We are very lucky that it's facing right towards us to see its full amazingness. I am currently collecting light frames, 300 seconds each, at Unity Game. In the times of DSLR, a 5 minute exposure would be the maximum you could do. Any second more and the sensor would just get way too hot and the noise would take over. But with a cooled camera, exposures of more than 10 minutes, 10 minutes, are nothing special. Connecting this camera to APT was the easiest task of my life. APT contains all the drivers you need for DSLR cameras, but for these dedicated astronomy cameras, you need to consult ASCOM. If you don't know about ASCOM, you probably live in a place with absolutely zero light pollution. <coughs> ASCOM is a set of drivers, software, with the mission to connect every imaginary type of equipment in astrophotography. It connects my mount with the laptop, my auto guider with the dithering software, and the plate solver with the imaging camera. And now it connects the 294 with APT. I simply had to download two drivers from the ZW website and with a shift click on the connect button in APT the camera was ready. But as always with new equipment there are a few things you need to get used to. Cooling down and warming the camera up can take a lot of time and it doesn't spit out raw DSLR files like C2R or NEF anymore. Instead, you now have to handle with these weird fit files. You need to debayer these files with the RGGB bayer pattern in order to see any color in your images. 
The good thing is that APT can preview the dbeard images and my processing software can convert the final stacked image into a .tiff file with which I can work in, in Photoshop. And the data I'm capturing outside right now, maybe I will add these images to the set I already have of the Pinwheel Galaxy. Just kidding, I have no data of the Pinball Galaxy. But I hope that I can get at least 3 hours of good quality data tonight. And I will of course share all of my imaging data with you, you can download it in the description. You will get every single light frame and the master correction frame of each type. In the last video about the Whirlpool Galaxy I added the single subs, dark frames, bright frames and flat frames. But now I'm taking way more images for these correction frames, 100 each and I can't possibly upload that many images. I don't know about you, but I'm way too excited about this new camera. The sensitivity of this thing goes through the roof. When focusing, I was able to use the Batnov mask in live view on a bright star. Live view Batnov masking. With the DSLR, this would be impossible. And all that I'm waiting for right now is tomorrow to see the, to see this amazing image that will hopefully come out of this thing. So let's see what this camera can do. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.